Today, my topic of discussion is maternal mortality. Maternal mortality is an important RCH indicator. Uh, as it has a uh, the social as well as the uh, health perspective, it is very much important because the maternal mortality is a main indicator of health as well as RCH indicator. The other RCH indicators, for example, infant mortality, child mortality, these are the other RCH indicator. So today we are going to discuss the maternal mortality. The maternal mortality or maternal death, according to WHO, the definition of maternal mortality is the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of duration and site of pregnancy, from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. The maternal mortality rate uh, is defined as total number of female deaths due to the complication of pregnancy, child death, or within 42 days of delivery in a year per one lakh live births in the seven year. So simply we can define the maternal mortality as the death of mother due to the complications in pregnancy at the time of birth and after the 42 days of after the birth of the baby. And the other definition that is the maternal mortality ratio, the number of maternal deaths during a given period per thousand life births during the same time period and the maternal mortality rate the number of maternal deaths in a given period per thousand oh sorry per one lakh women of reproductive age during the same time period so actually the maternal mortality rate we are defining that is the maternal mortality ratio but we are describing it as a maternal mortality rate. The maternal mortality is being addressed globally. It was addressed in the Millennium Development Goals, which were developed in 2000 and which uh, were made to achieve up to the 2015. And regarding the maternal mortality, that was the goal number five, and that described to improve the maternal health. And in the to address the maternal health in the Millennium Development Goals, it was the target was to reduce the maternal mortality by two quarters. And the, uh, now, as there, there are sustainable development goals, sustainable development goals are being formed in 2015 and that are applied from 2016 up to 2030. And it has targets and indicators. So in the Sustainable Development Goals, goal number three, that says that ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. 
on the target for there are different targets in sustainable development goals regarding maternal mortality and infant and child mortality but the target regarding the maternal mortality that is by 2030 we have to reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 1 lakh live births. Uh, worldwide, more than 50 million women suffer from poor reproductive health and serious pregnancy related illness and disability. Every year, more than 3 lakh women die from complications of pregnancy and childbirth. The 99% the maternal mortality is occurring in the developing nations. Most of these deaths occur in Asia, but the risk of dying is highest in Africa. In developing countries, 50% of the deliveries are being attended by professional health staff. But in the Southeast Asia, that is the 60%, the births which are attended by skilled birth attendants. The skilled birth attendants are uh, midwives, LHVs, and doctors. Uh, in 2019, it was estimated about uh, 3 lakh 3,000 women died during pregnancy and childbirth. Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia accounted for approximately 86% of the estimated global maternal deaths. Sub-Saharan Africa alone accounted roughly about two-thirds of the maternal deaths, while Southeast Asia accounted for nearly one-fifth of them. Two countries, that is the India and Nigeria, it have one third of the global maternal deaths. It is a tragic situation as these deaths are not caused by a disease but occurred during or after a natural process. We all know that the pregnancy is a physiological phenomenon and the birth is a natural process. But what happens? There are many complications which are occurring during the pregnancy, during the birth, and up to 42 days. And that is causing the maternal mortality, the maternal births worldwide. So it is one of the leading cause of deaths for women of reproductive age in many parts of the world. Most of maternal deaths and pregnancy complications can be prevented if pregnant women have access to good quality antenatal care, natural and postnatal care, and if certain harmful practices are being avoided. For every woman who dies, from causes related to pregnancy or childbirth, it is estimated that 20 others who suffer pregnancy related illness or experience other severe consequences and the complications. <clears throat> An estimated 10 million women annually die who survive their pregnancies experience such adverse outcomes. So there are many complications, not only the maternal deaths, but who have the morbidity, they have also the adverse complications like rupture of uterus, like vasico uterus fistula, and many, many other complications. So the MMR in the developing countries in 2019, that is 220 versus, this is the 220, that is in the developing nations, 
and in comparison only and only toilet for one lakh life births in the developing country so the mmr in the developing regions is 15 times higher than in developing regions sub saharan africa has the highest mmr at 500 maternal deaths per life births Eastern Asia has the lowest among uh, the developing regions that has 33 maternal deaths for one lakh nine births. So MMR is 40 times higher in Europe and 60 times higher than in Australia and New Zealand. So we can say that in the developing nations, it is 40 times higher than in Europe and it is 60 times higher than in Australia and New Zealand. About 50 to 70 percent maternal deaths occur in the postpartum period and for which 45 percent deaths occur in first 24 hours after the level and more than two thirds during the first week. It is being described that in the maternal deaths, the first week of the birth of uh, after the birth of the baby is very much important for the maternal health, and the first 24 to 48 hours, which are very much important, and between 11 to 17 percent of the maternal deaths occur during the childbirth itself due to the Knowledge and other complications like prolonged labor or rupture of the uterus. So, every day, approximately 830 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. Maternal mortality is higher in women living in rural areas and among the poor communities. Young adolescents face a higher risk of complications and death as a result of pregnancy than other women. So, as the mother's age decreases, the maternal mortality rate also increases. And it is the Sustainable Development Goals that has the target that we have to reduce the maternal mortality rate less than 70 per 1 lakh nine births. A maternal mortality rate strongly reflects the overall effectiveness of the health system because low income developing countries suffer from weak administration, technical and logistical capacity, inadequate financial investment and a lack of skilled health personnel. So whenever we are talking about the maternal mortality, it means we are talking about the effective ways of reproductive health system of any country. So scaling up interventions like increase the number of parts attended by skilled health personnel, providing access to emergency obstetric care, when necessary and providing post natal for mothers and babies could shortly reduce both maternal and neonatal deaths. Enhancing women access to family planning, adequate nutrition, improved water and sanitation facilities, and affordable basic health care, protection from abuse and violence discrimination, empowerment of women, greater involvement of men in maternal and child care, which lower mortality rates are. There are, these are not impossible in practical actions, but proven cost effective provisions that women of reproductive age have a right to expect. So these are the simple interventions by which we can reduce the mortality rate at a uh, much, much percentage. 
So what happens? The low status of women in society, coupled with a low literacy level, prevent the woman from taking antenatal care, even if services are available. Because the woman doesn't know uh, about the importance of antenatal care. So they are not taking the antenatal care in their pregnancy. And that's why the diverse signs are not being picked. And those women go into complication and causing the maternal mortality. Most deliveries take place at home without the services of trained midwifery personnel. It is being estimated that in Pakistan, uh, about 35% deliveries are still conducted by unskilled uh, birth attendants. That's why the mortality rate is not only high in the developing nations, but even it is high in Pakistan. There is a inverse relationship between lifetime risk of maternal deaths and availability of trained health worker during pregnancy at the time of delivery. Means as we are increasing the percentage of trained health worker or skilled birth attendants at the time of delivery, we can reduce, reduce the lifetime risk of maternal death or we can uh, decrease the percentage of maternal mortality. The lifetime chances of maternal deaths in the world in 2018 as a whole, it is about 1 in 80. It varies from region and from country to country. The lifetime risk, it means that from how many, the, what number of women have a risk of maternal mortality. If we are saying that it is 1 in 80, it means from 80 women globally, one has the chances of mortality and morbidity worldwide. It varies from also region to region, least developed develop countries. The chances are 1 in 37, and developing nations, it ranges 1 in 50. Industrialized countries, it is about 1 in 2,800. It means in developed nations, that is from 2,800 women, one has the risk, lifetime risk for mortality and mortality. In Sweden, it is of one in eleven hundred, uh, sorry, eleven thousand two hundred. So, as you can see, the difference between the developed and developing nations in the bar chart. So, even we can reduce the maternal mortality, and the progress is possible as the Sri Lanka. Thailand and Malaysia has reduced maternal mortality because they have improved their reproductive health services. They have uh, increased their skilled birth attendants. They have increased the coverage of antenatal care and they have the basic uh, emergency, basic and emergency of certain their facilities at their hospitals. So here you can compare that it is at uh, the 2017 and 18 estimate that is the Pakistan that is about 140 maternal deaths per 1 lakh live births. And in comparison, you can see the Afghanistan that has 396. And if we are comparing it with India, it has 125 maternal deaths for one lakh live births. 
So as far as the Pakistan uh, maternal mortality is concerned, the Pakistan maternal and child health indicator remains extremely poor. Every year, 25,000 to 30,000 women die from complications of pregnancy and childbirth. In Pakistan, MMR is around 140 per 1 lakh live births, and that is the uh, 2017 estimate. And even in the Pakistan Demographic Health Survey 2017 and 18. But the some reference is given the data of 174 to 178 for one leg live births. In Pakistan, the lifetime risk of dying due to the maternal cause is one in 180 women. It means in Pakistan, from 180 women, one has the risk of maternal mortality and morbidity. But the millions more suffer ill health and disability. One million children die before the age of five, while 16,000 die in the first month of their birth. That is the neonatal deaths. Awareness of nature, maternal and newborn complications among women, families and attendants, attendants is insufficient. Maternal and newborn deaths occur mostly at home without a skilled health provider attending. For 30% of women, those deliver at the home and we have the high fertility rate, that is the total fertility rate, that is about 2.6%. And it is also much, much more in comparison with the neighboring countries. Pakistan is fully committed to ICTV, that is the International Conference on Population Development Goals and even targets for uh, uh, in 1994 even we are committed with sustainable development goals and that says that up to 2030 we have to reduce the maternal mortality up to less than 70 per one lakh live births so in pakistan there is a mnch program that is the vertical program that was established in Ministry of Health in February 2005. The technical advisory group formulated to assist in development of MNCH policy and strategic framework document developed through prevention and district consultation and endorsed by the Prime Minister and National Health Board. So the MNCH MNCH program that is working in Pakistan from 2005 and it is working on four to five sectors. It is uh, providing the basic and emergency of certain care. It is providing the uh, family planning. It is providing the good antenatal care and it is addressing the uh, nutritional problems in females and it has interventions in the newborn care. So by these four or five interventions, they are focusing not only the maternal mortality, but also the infant and child mortality. So by this picture, this picture shows the iceberg phenomena. The iceberg phenomena, which is applied on the maternal mortality, it describes that whatever we are observing, we are giving the data for Pakistan, for example, that is the 140 per 1 lakh live births. But still, this is the figure which is being observed. But still, we have the submerged portion. This is the 
exposed portion what the submerged portion means there are many bats which are being uncounted because those are being uh, set at the remote areas that's why that is not being notified as far as the maternal bats the causes of maternal bats are concerned there are direct causes of maternal mortality and there are indirect causes of maternal mortality the direct causes it accounts about 80 percent and indirect causes it accounts about 20 percent and the direct causes it includes severe bleeding that accounts 24 percent and in the severe bleeding it is the antipartum hemorrhage and uh, postpartum hemorrhage and the infections it is also known as purpural sepsis it accounts 15 percent So the uh, causes of maternal deaths. So there are twenty uh, percent which are indirect causes and eighty percent which are the direct causes. And in the direct causes, that is the severe bleeding, that is the APH and PTH, that accounts twenty four percent. And the infections, that is known as purpural sepsis. That accounts 15%. Acclamation, that is about 12%. Unsafe abortions, that accounts about uh, 13%. Obstructive labor, that accounts 8%. And the other causes, that is the 8%. And in the indirect cases, the prevalence of uh, anemia in the women's reproductive age women, diabetes mellitus, the mothers which are suffering from cardiovascular diseases, diseases of the endocrine and the metabolic disorders like hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, even the pregnant women which are suffering from the hepatitis, tuberculosis, malaria and HIV AIDS worldwide. So this is the pie chart showing the causes of maternal deaths and even their interventions. So severe bleeding, for example, APH and PPH can be properly managed uh, managed by active management of third stage of labor. And as far as atlantia and preatlantia is concerned, it can be managed by migration sulfates and unsafe abortions can be managed properly by proper family planning and post abortion uh, care. The infections, that is the purpural sepsis, that can be addressed by proper antibiotics and the tetanus corzide vaccine or immunization and clean and soft level. And as far as the obstructive labor is concerned, we can use the photograph or cesarean section to prevent the complications in mothers. There are some other socio-cultural factors which are also contributing the maternal mortality. That is the illiteracy of the woman. The literacy of the woman, especially in Pakistan, that is very much low. The age of women, as the age decreases, the maternal mortality also increases. As far as the birth interval, as the birth interval or spacing is decreasing, the maternal mortality is increasing. The parity, the number of children are increasing. 
the chances of maternal deaths also increasing. Even the malnutrition, for example, the mothers uh, have the anemia. It is uh, estimated that in the Pakistan, the pregnant women, about 50% of the pregnant women have the anemia. So, if they have a nutritional problems, they will face the complications. Even the cultural practices and beliefs, family size, violence against women, socioeconomic conditions, poverty, low status of women in society, lack of knowledge among females about the pregnancy and its complications, health care delivery system, and delivery by unskilled persons. So, this is the bar chart showing the skilled birth attendants worldwide, which has increased uh, by the passage of time. But even the three delays, which are very much important in the maternal mortality, the first delay that is delay in the deciding to seek professional care. The second delay in identification of risk and reaching at an appropriate medical facility. The third delay in receiving adequate and appropriate treatment at the facility. So these are the three delays. The first delay in the recognition and the decision. The second delay from transport of that mother, uh, that is the delay in the transporting the mother to the health facility. And the third delay, arrival at the hospital and the management or the treatment which uh, is beginning late. So that's why the mother dies due to delay in treatment. So as far as the prevention is concerned, so there are some preventive and social layers. The high maternal mortality reflects not only in adequacy of healthcare services for mothers, but also a low standard of living and socio-economic status of the community. Uh, here in, uh, there is a high maternal uh, deaths, uh, those countries have low standard of living and the GDP or the social economic status of that country, even that community, has very much uh, uh, less in comparison with the developed nations. That's why they have the high maternal mortality. In the world as a whole, the problem of maternal death is principally one of the applying existing obstetric knowledge to antenatal, intranatal, and postnatal services rather than developing new skills. Means there are already the reproductive health services which should be available and accessible, but not the new skills which are required. Any attempt to lower maternal mortality rate must take into consideration the following layers. The early registration of the pregnancy at the health facility, and there should be at least four antenatal caretakers. The antenatal caretakers are very much important, and the objective of the antenatal care is well-being of mother and well-being of a newborn. So that's why it is recommended by the World Health Organization that there should be minimum four antenatal checkups. In Pakistan, the antenatal care checkups, that is uh, the four antenatal care checkups coverage that is about uh, 70% and the one antenatal care checkup that is about uh, 86 percentage 
even the dietary supplementation, including correction of anemia. So the dietary supplementation means the proper and balanced diet, which is required to a pregnant mother should be provided to, to address the deficiency of protein, the deficiency of micronutrient and macronutrient, for example, vitamins, vitamin B12, vitamin uh, the other vitamins, for example, iron. So, the vitamin B12 and iron is very much important for the growth of fetus. If the mother is suffering from malnutrition, what will happen? There will be the uh, increase in the growth of fetus and the baby will born with a low birth weight and if the baby is born with low birth weight, what will happen? It will increase the chances of mortality. That can be a neonatal mortality, and that can be a, a child mortality, and that can be an infant mortality. Even the new, especially the newborn, which is facing like neonatal jaundice, birth has fatia, and the many other problems. The prevention of infection and hemorrhage during parturum period, it is also very much important by providing the antibiotics coverage. If there is a hemorrhage, uh, that should be properly managed if that is during the birth or even after the birth due to the tear in the uterus. Even the prevention of complications, for example, eclampsia and pre-eclampsia, that should be properly managed. Malpresentations, which is causing the prolonged labor and the rupture causing the ruptured uterus can be properly managed by, for example, photograph and by C-section and treatment of medical conditions. For example, if mother is suffering from hypertension, cardiac diseases, diabetes, tuberculosis, that should be properly managed. Even in anti-malaria, if the mother is suffering from malaria, that should be addressed. Some mother should be properly vaccinated for the tetanus toxin. It is necessary that every mother should have a vaccination of tetanus toxin. That should be minimum two doses after the completion of three uh, months. It will not only prevent the tetanus in the mother, but also in the tetanus disease in the newborn. That is also known as neonatal. Clean delivery practices, three cleans are being should be observed. Trained local dyes and female health workers. So if there are local or traditional bar performance, those should be trained. In institutional deliveries for women with basic obstetric history sorry, with bad obstetric history and the risk factors. So whatever the woman has bad obstetric history or she has a danger signs or risk factors that should be delivered at an institution or hospital to prevent the mortality as well as poverty. The promotion of family planning to control the number of children to not more than two and stressing of facts. So family planning is also important tool for spacing and to prevent the unwanted parts. Identification of every maternal bath and searching for its cause. Uh, it is practices in the developed nations, not in developing nations. What they do? 
they are doing the autopsy on the maternal deaths. That what was the cause by which the mother died? And if the causes are identified, they are addressing that cause. And by this, they are reducing the maternal mortality. Even the safe abortion services, which should be available, it will also contribute to reduce the maternal mortality. So even some picture, how can we improve the maternal health in Pakistan? What is those preventive measures? There are some socio-cultural factors. What we have to do? We have to improve the socio-economic conditions. We have to improve the literacy rate by educating women. At least secondary education should be must. There should be laws, strict laws, that girls should not marry before the age of 18 years, at least. Empower the women that she should fight for their rights and can make decisions for her own family. That is known as gender empowerment. Aware the women about family planning through mass media, communication, seminars, and other uh, social media. So family planning is also important regarding the maternal mortality. The prevalence uh, of the family planning that is known as CPR, that is the contraceptive prevalence rate of Pakistan, that is only and only 35%. According to the Demographic Health Survey 2017 and 18, and if we are comparing it with the developed nations, that is much more, that will be about uh, more than 70 percent so even this family planning uh, percentage prevalence coverage is, is very much less in Pakistan the government policy what is the political commitment of government to address the maternal mortality appointment of more female staff and give them a special training to address the maternal poverty. Make proper policy and implement it through proper monitoring and evolution system. Strengthening the infrastructure, improve quality of services. Allocate more budget for health. Strengthen MNCH program, which is very much important vertical program regarding the mothers and the new boys. Effective performance monitoring and evolution mechanism to help to guide progress and the recommendations that is the improvement in existing health services infrastructure, ensure availability of safe motherhood services. The safe motherhood services are four services. One, that is the provision of the family planning and the antenatal coverage. Third one, that is the clean and safe delivery practices. And fourth one, that is the postnatal care. So these are the four pillars of the safe motherhood services. If we are addressing only and only these four uh, services, of the safe motherhood, we can reduce maternal, uh, maternal mortality uh, in half percentage of mothers can be served. The training of TBS to recognize complication earlier. The traditional birth attendants should be trained to recognize danger signs. And if they find those danger signs, they uh, should immediately refer that lady to a nearest hospital for proper management. Even the prevention of pre and prevention of infection 
and hemorrhage during torture, water supplementation, including correction of anemia by pro providing vitamin B12 and by providing the iron supplementation and by pro providing the dietary supplementation. And if there is any systemic associated, any systemic disease that should be properly treated or managed. So these are the recommendations by which we also can reduce the maternal mortality and big percentage of maternal deaths can be prevented. Thank you.